What is going on everybody? Welcome to Dylan Talks Tone. Today we are back in the shop here at Dylan Talks Tone in Georgia from our little journey out there to Texas Toast Guitars. But I'm going to give you over the next couple of days a couple of more videos uh, to give you kind of a kind of a feeling into the uh, process there about building guitars. So the last video we did, we left you with, uh, what were we doing? Oh yeah, cutting out bandsaw shaping guitars. So the next is start to get into finishing. So what you're about to see is a little bit of the sanding process. They start with uh, 80 grit, move to 150, and then move to 220, and then we'll get into another process here, but I'm gonna show you that, and then something pretty cool. Get to the 150, then you can do it by hand with, with the paper in your hand, and then we'll do, two, and then we'll do 220 on the sides. And then we'll do 220 on the back and the top with the orbital right at the end. Now and, the reason, and the reason I don't want to do 220 and then do the sides is because you'll scratch Please. all this up with the 150. So this should sense? take you guys about 25 minutes to do, but you have two hours. So everybody has to be done by three. Yep. If it doesn't take you until three, don't keep sanding. Free. Yeah, don't think, don't you think have you're doing a better free. job by spending more time doing it. Um, what can happen is you start you start rounding things off and making things. You, you want the parts that are um, supposed to be soft looking soft, but you want the parts that are supposed to be hard looking hard. Okay. Now so how the place where people screw it up is horns here. So so on a on a telly body or on the the batfish bodies. Um, I would say keep everything as flat as you can and do the bare minimum to get rid of burn marks and make everything kind of round on the edges. Does that make sense? Okay, don't, don't make it more round than it already is. Just, just bring back the, the little bit of roundness that there is. Okay? <clears throat> How visible are the uh, scratches like if you're going from 80 to 150? So after the 80, you won't see any scratches. It'll just get smoother and smoother. It'll just feel smoother. So you just sort of have to know the process and know, you know, what you've done, when what to you see, what you've done, what you haven't done, what you need to do. Um, I think one of the problems is people have a tendency to over sand. Um, so so each step takes less and less time. To we'll spend the most time with the 80 grit sandpaper. We'll barely spend any time with the 150 and 220. Okay. And I'll walk around and check stuff out and you can ask me questions. So again, you guys have until three, but at three o'clock, you're done sanding whether you're done or not. All of you should be done well before three o'clock. Yeah. Deal. Okay. <clears throat> and I would say if, if you have any more body, oh, I don't know that anybody else has a hard line here. If you do, um, right at the end with the 150 and 220, just sort of knock that, that really sharp corner off, okay? So, one of the things to get an even finish on a guitar, um, you know, paint can soak into a guitar very unevenly. Uh, whether you wanna show the grain or not, there's a process. And so, Texas Toast uses a very modern process with UV light. So, I'm gonna, Chris is gonna show us how uh, they put the UV uh, cured pore filler on the guitar before they paint it. Solar light. And we do have another setup, so if somebody wants to come in and see how it's UV cured, it's super boring. I just take the light and wave it over the, the stuff, and, and you have to get all the angles and, and things like that. Okay? You can watch. If you yeah, want. you can yeah, watch if you want. Does it cure for the instant? Uh, yeah, yeah, it does, but, but you have to give it some time. And on end grain, we found you have to do it a couple different times, and you have to do it from different, different angles because it'll kind of, they say soak in and then hide. So you have to kind of, yeah, you can't, just, you can't just do it flat. So there was a little bit of a learning curve with this stuff too. And you take it out and you just kind of mash it in. Okay? And I don't wanna I don't wanna fill all my holes oh, with it. I haven't drilled my next holes yet. That's okay, we can do that um, after we do pore filler. I knew that. We could also maybe well, these guys well, so Yeah, well two two other guys are doing this. You and Matt could do. Um, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay. And when you're doing around, you know, these, I've got Q-tips so we can clean them out. You don't want to just go up close to it. You want to actually do it just, just as well there. Yeah, and this is cool because you can start to kind of see the grain, you know, even more grain, yeah. Okay. Or the scratches you left in it. Or the scratches you left <laughs> in it, yeah. yeah. I can really see those when I, when I put the uh, UV light on it. We'll see. We'll see how I did. <laughs> one time I did one and, and you could see all the tooling. Uh, Mark sent it because I sanded it so poorly. I was like, and <laughs> yeah. you can see that I need to sand some more <laughs> after this stuff is already hard. And on the end grain, which is almost all the way around the edge, there's end grain there, there's end grain there to there, there's end grain here. I go over that stuff a couple times. So it just soaks it in? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm sort of mashing it in there a little bit, you know. Is there a threshold that's too much? Um, probably um, when you start getting bored, it's probably about the right time to move on. I just wipe it down a couple times, you know. Okay. Is there um, too much sanding? Yeah, there's too much sanding, there's too much pore filling. You could probably let so much soak in that um, we have had actually had issues where and I haven't had this happen in a long time um, where it bubbles up later on because of the this stuff's not actually cured all the way. That's how I found out you need to hit it at a bunch of different angles. And by found out, I mean I called the company and asked them. They told me that I was doing it wrong. Yeah, because there's no videos on this online. That right has one. Who does? Robbie has one. Robbie? Yeah. Um, from uh, one of those online videos. Robbie O'Brien. Oh, okay. So yes. what did y'all use before this? Uh, so we would just shoot it with uh, the Simtech uh, uh, sealer that we use. Like a sanding sealer? Um, it's, well, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a polyester uh, sealer similar to polar plast and stuff like that. And is this just quicker? Well, so no, this is just a, another step. So the neat thing about this stuff is, and we're not doing it this way, um, but, but if we were going for car fender finish on this, you know, super smooth, we'd do this and then I'd shoot it with three rounds of the Simtech uh, sealer. The easy sanding? Yeah, the easy sanding sealer, 28X50, and then that would be it. And before, we would shoot it with that stuff and it would soak in and you'd have to, you'd, you'd hit it with probably two coats. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have to let that dry and you'd sand it back and then you'd have to give it another couple coats. So this, this, will, just, this will prevent paint from sinking into the grain uh, incongruently on the top and the end grain, you know what I mean? So it'll all look, it'll all look even and nice. Yeah, yeah, so. And you're not doing the cavities like the neck. Correct. You don't have to. Yeah, you don't need to do that. Don't really want to do that. I don't think. And then what you're going to do is you're going to rub it. You're going to basically completely dry it as much as you can. Imagine, imagine if you put like a piece of aluminum foil or copper foil or because nobody wants to sand the grooves of that. Yeah. Because this stuff really does turn into it's a still box. So if they have a bunch of you know little runs and stuff like that. It's <laughs> some some companies do hard yeah, to yeah, sand. Yeah, yeah. What like like last falls have little cups that the pots were in. And what are these paper towels? Does it take to dry? Uh, these are super super high end paper towels. Jags. What's that? How long does that take to dry? What you screwed up and way to do long? Well, um, so so then we'll take it into the paint booth and I'll hit it with the UV light yeah. and it cures instantly. Oh, so it's not yeah, dry fast on us here. No, at all. No, at all. Yeah. Anyway. 
Yeah, so I'll usually do a batch of five or six guitars when I do them. Now, depending on the class, depending on the finish process, uh, depending on the type of finish that you want on the guitar, um, you'll either put a bunch of uh, coats of sealer, not a bunch, a couple coats of sealer. Uh, he mentioned that for like car fender style finish. But on this one, everybody kind of wanted to see the grain in their stuff, so they're uh, doing it a little differently. But then they're gonna jump into uh, the color finishes. And what's cool about this class is if you bring your own mask, he will actually let you paint your own guitar and give you direction about how uh, to do a burst, how to apply color, uh, that sort of thing. So that's what you are about to see here. Yeah, so go a little more like this. So if you hang out through the rest of this series, you'll see the guitars all painted. They're super cool. Once the guitars are painted, uh, or while the guitars are being painted, uh, the other, there's a couple other things that are gonna happen. We're gonna be making pickups for them, which we're teaching people how to make pickups. I'll put that in a separate video. And then we're also gonna be doing fret work. Uh, we're really gonna dive into it because the, the necks aren't fretted. So, we're going to dive into fret work, but those are kind of involved processes. So we'll go ahead and put those in their separate videos. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button and, uh, you know, hang out with us for the rest of this journey throughout the rest of this week. I'm going to go ahead and keep putting these videos out every day. And I think you are going to dig them. Check out Dylan Talks Tone for pickups as well as check out Texas Toast Guitars for classes and their custom guitars that are super cool too. We'll see you in the next video.